Hello folks, Jason Chrisman, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio beekeeper. A lot's happened this week and a little bit last week that I didn't get to talk about because I did a video on Larabi's um, vaporizer. Um, if you haven't seen that video, I highly suggest you check it out because his vaporizer is top notch. And if you're looking for a way to treat mites, that's a surefire way to do so. So if you're interested, I'll link the video up here. Um, last week, I got my first swarm call of the year. I was pretty excited. And what pushed the excitement over the top? It was within three quarters of a mile from here. Um, it's actually a farmer that butts against our lease farm. And uh, he works for the township. So he's been up and down our road here um, many a times, looked through the trees, knows I keep bees. We've talked about bees a few times when he's out here working on the road and uh, that worked out for me this time. Kind of. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, I got over there um, to his house and uh, here's this huge swarm hanging on a small pin oak tree. It just so happened that when I got the call, of course you're not expecting it, so I go out to get my swarm supplies and uh, Oh yeah, that's right. Over winter, you put them away like an idiot. So then I went into full panic mode because, you know, I'm thinking he's going to call somebody else. They're going to fly away. All these thoughts are racing through my mind as I'm running around trying to gather everything I need to capture this swarm. I had a brain fart, folks. Over the winter, um, I keep all my swarm um, removal supplies in a five-gallon bucket. And over the winter, I seen that bucket sitting around. I thought, you know, I'm going to go ahead and put this stuff away. It didn't do me any favors, <laughs> let me tell you. So in the last couple of days, I've since put together another swarm uh, bucket to catch swarms and all the supplies I need. And I'm now ready for more calls, but they're not coming. But anyway, on with the story. I get over there and uh, I grabbed a five frame nuke box to take over and capture this swarm. And I got there and I'm like, oh. These aren't going to fit in this box. <laughs> Since I'm so close to you, I'm just going to run back to the house, grab a bite to eat, and then I'm going to come back over with a bigger box. He says, do what you need to do, help yourself. You know where they're at. So about 45 minutes later, I went back over with a bigger box, and within probably 15 minutes, I had them off the limb, down in the box. Everybody was fanning. Things were looking great. First swarm call of the season right here. They were right there on that tree limb where you can see some of the bees still flying around but I've since sprayed that and they will not land on that now. And I have the queen in this box. I'll return first thing in the morning about three quarters of a mile from the house so first thing in the morning I'll come pick them up, take them home. I went back, I think it was about six o'clock the next morning. The sun was just coming up and it just so happened to be that this swarm was on the edge of a woods facing west. Sun comes up in the east, so it worked out in my favor. It was a nice cool morning. I think it was uh, 42 degrees when I went and picked them up. So every single bee was in the box. I simply closed the lid, brought them home, and set them where they were going to be. Went and did my farm chores, came home, transferred everybody over into their new uh, permanent box. And here's a time-lapse video of what that looked like. So everything's looking good, you know. I'm watching them over the next couple days. Bees in and out. Um, everything looks great. About three days later, I go back over to check the box and I see like five bees coming in and out. And it's the middle of the day. There should be hundreds of bees in and out. I thought, this don't look right. So I pop the lid. Here's a cluster of bees on a frame about this big around. There must have been 25 bees there and no queen. The swarm had left. Well, using my knowledge of what I should have done, <laughs> what I should have done was I, sh I had two options. I could have caged the queen and 
left them contained in that box for a little bit, wait for the bees to start building up resources, um, pollen and nectar and things of that sort, and maybe it would persuade the queen to want to stay. Or I could have offered a frame of brood from any one of these colonies back here to the swarm. Bees won't leave brood, so that would have been another option. Which one of those did I do? Neither one, because I thought for sure that they were going to stay. So, you know, we often say as beekeepers, honeybee swarms are free bees. Well, looking back, since I have nothing to show for it now, I got to figure two trips, but it was only three quarters of a mile, I understand, so I ain't got much in gas, but there is some cost there, and my time. So, did I really get free bees? I don't think I did. I wish I still had them, but I don't. So anyway, folks, learn from my lesson. Um, if you get a swarm of bees, offer them a frame of brood, cage that queen for, for a few days, take steps so that you get to keep them, unlike I did. Um, I've walked around my property here a few different times trying to find them. Nothing. They're gone. So, is what it is. Just a couple days ago, I went through all these splits here behind me and marked all the queens, did a brief inspection on each of them. There was a couple of them that had uh, swarm cells, so I got to make a couple uh, real quick splits. And uh, I noticed something while I was in all of those colonies. Not one single bit of evidence of small hive beetles. None. There is absolutely nothing, and I'm thrilled. Um, with that said, you remember last fall, I applied some nematodes to the soil. Beneficial nematodes are a great way to control small hive beetles because these nematodes, you apply them to the soil around your colonies where the hive beetles develop in the soil. These nematodes go after them and they kill them. And for every beetle that they kill, it produces more nematodes. So it's a great, great way to control small hive beetles in the soil and have to do nothing up here, um, at least so far. So that said, um, I'm so excited to see that I didn't have any beetles or any of that hassle to worry about so far this year that I actually just ordered me another application of nematodes, which looks something like this. Now these just came yesterday and uh, my day's pretty, pretty full today. I have to graph later today. Um, and then mid morning this morning, I have uh, an awards assembly to go to for my daughter who's graduating this year. Um, so, got a lot going on today. So, I'll probably end up in applying the nematodes um, this weekend or maybe Monday when it's a little bit cooler yet because you shouldn't apply them in direct heat. And my mornings are uh, pretty full. So, I might wait till Monday. But either way, nematodes are getting applied. If you haven't heard of these beneficial nematodes, I'm going to link my video on them from last year where I discuss them. And it also shows how to apply them and it's linked up here. And if you're interested, there's a link in the video description of that video where you can order nematodes for yourself and apply them around your hives so you don't have a small hive beetle problem. Um, I also noticed while in the colonies that, boy, they are booming with this warmer weather. Um, and it's been nice, um, the warmer weather. I'm so sick of uh, low 40s, high 30s in the morning. Um, having to still light a fire. Well, that's went away this week and the colonies are showing it. Booming, booming, booming. So if you're not in your hives frequently, you're going to want to get in there right now and make sure that there's no signs of swarming because it is the season, folks. And, uh, you know, we get to that black locust flow and you're not having inspected your colonies, they're going to overflow rather quickly. And I look for that flow to start any time for us here in Central Ohio. I know down in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, somebody posted that the, the bloom was on. And then I seen uh, in Columbus, North Columbus, um, somebody said that their bloom was, was on. So shouldn't be too much longer for us. I'm hoping, though, that it's not next weekend before it starts to bloom because, gosh, Memorial Day weekend is always always rainy and that's how it usually works for us 
the blooms will open up and rain will wash the nectar out. Not a good thing. But right now, the wild cherry trees, they're in full bloom. Um, if you're not familiar with what those look like, they look like this here. So that's been my week. Um, like I say, I'm going to graft later today and um, hopefully um, next week we'll be transferring some queen cells to the incubator. Um, oh, one more thing I want to discuss. I got a phone call this week from the Licking County Bee Inspector. It seems Ohio has got a new bee inspector for Licking County and I am thrilled. Um, don't have anything personal against the last guy. He was just invisible and never showed up. And, you know, what good is a bee inspector that doesn't want to show up? <laughs> so anyway, um, this new, new bee inspector will be here next week and uh, maybe we'll get a little sit down with him and uh, see what he has to say about what he's seeing here in Lincoln County with the bees. So anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed this video. Have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.